Atraxa hit the battlefield. Atraxa trigger. Let's see what cards we find. Our opponent just scoops to the dramatic entrance Atraxa. We're getting to do something cool with dramatic entrance, I dare say. All right, so dress down dies, but before we pass, I have effects. Hello and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining the Red Face Fitness channel today because we have something spicy for you. And I should mention that this list is heavily influenced by the content creator Mistaken who streams over on Twitch. I believe he has a Patreon as well. He's been killing it recently with Dramatic Amulet, playing Dramatic Entrance and Atraxa Grand Unifier. And so, obviously, we gotta take this for a spin. So, for those of you who are not initiated into what this combo is, Dramatic Entrance is a 5-mana instant that says you may put a green creature from your hand onto the battlefield. And then, of course, Atraxa is a big green creature that does a lot of things. It's a 7-mana card that we can cast, theoretically, but probably will never be casting. We'll see. And it is a legendary 7-7 Flying Vigilance Death Touch Lifelink. When it enters the battlefield, reveal the top 10 cards of your library. For each card type, you may put a card of that type from among the revealed cards into your hand and the rest on the bottom in a random order. So, of course, you put an Atraxa into play and you reveal 10 cards. Maybe you pick up a Titan as a creature, a Summoner's Pact as an instant, a Dryad as an enchantment, an Amulet as an artifact, and then a land. And you know, you just get the, the full gamut of value there. Of course, that's the idea is we can use Dramatic Entrance to just surprise our opponent with a Atraxa at instant speed and also refill our hand. But then, of course, the fail case for Dramatic Entrance is just a five mana put our Titan into play, which ain't too bad. First of all, there is some interest in using Dramatic Entrance on our opponent's in step, say against Murktide, so that we can threaten to put a Titan into play and they have to counter the Dramatic Entrance and then we get to untap and slam Titan during our main phase anyways. But um, of course, we can also just use this as a pseudo through the breach style effect where just for five mana instead of six, we just get to put our Titan into play during our own turn. So anyways, that is the idea behind the card. And we'll see some of the weaknesses and strengths as we go through the league. That said, I have made some small adjustments, not only to the mana base of the deck, but also to the sideboard. Mistaken is pretty well known for playing some unusual cards uh, that seem to work for Mistaken, but I've never had a whole lot of success with, and that includes cards like Fire Spout and Oblivion Stone. I'm not necessarily saying that those cards are bad. However, personally, my preference is not to play with them. Fire Spout, because a lot of the creatures you want to hit with Sp Fire Spout can grow out of range. For example, Fire Spout's not as particularly good as you would want it to be against a deck like Hammer Time, because once they suit up with a hammer, then your Fire Spout does nothing, right? Fire Spout is theoretically good against Scam to clear all their small creatures, but oops, your opponent happened to put a plus one, plus one counter on their Fury, and now your Fire Spout does nothing, right? There's a lot of situations like that where Fire Spout just doesn't get the job done, even against things like um, Hardened Scales, where theoretically cleaning their board of small creatures would be great, but they just pile on counters and your Fire Spout does nothing. So there's too many situations like that where I'm not a big fan of Fire Spout. And then for Oblivion Stone, I just feel like having a card in the sideboard specifically for dealing with Elish Norn, which is uh, one you see primarily from the four color slash five color nonsense pile deck. I'm just not interested in trying to beat that card or trying to beat that particular matchup. I, I will take the L if we end up getting paired against that. But we do have a secret up our sleeve, which is to just Dramatic Entrance or hard cast an Atraxa, and that might let us get back into the game if we fall behind. So it is worth noting there is no Cultivator Colossus in this list. So, and additionally, cutting some of the cards like Fire Spout allows us to free up some more space in the mana base. For example, to play multiple copies of Slesnia Sanctuary so we can activate our Slayers and Sun Home if we happen to draw a red source and a white source. This makes it a little more likely. Plus, we have one copy of Rot Farm and the main board Bajuka Bog as a way to get us to hard casting Atraxa as black sources. We have black, white, blue and green, obviously. So it is possible to hard cast Atrax, although I expect that might be difficult. And instead, I've chosen to include a few more eclectic choices, I suppose you could say, in the sideboard. First of all, I am taking one page out of the mistaken notebook here, and I am choosing to test playing without Force of Vigor, as the idea is that the matchups where Force of Vigor are good, like Scales, for example, or um, against uh, the, the Mirror, they're either not super common to play against, or we already have a good matchup against them. Like, we don't need a card like Force of Vigor against Boggles or against Scales because we can beat them with the natural game plan of our deck. And the Mirror is just an uncommon occurrence. And if we face the Mirror, then hopefully we won't get forced. We might just have a faster hand than them anyways, especially with Entrance being a five-mana ramp spell, basically, that lets us put a Titan into play. So we don't have to get 
quite as much mana into play. Um, but obviously there may be some loss of equity and the force of bigger matchups. But the main thought is that against things like Scam and Merktide, you don't actually want to bring in Force of Vigor anyways, despite the fact that those are Blood Moon decks, because Force is a dead card if they don't have the Blood Moon, right? So we're choosing to go without it this time, and this gives us room for a lot of interesting cards. The first one I want to touch on is Ratchet Bomb. Two mana, you can tap it to put a charge counter on it, and then you can tap and sacrifice it to destroy each non-land permanent with that number of char with that number of converted mana cost. So like if you have a Ratchet Bomb on one and you sacrifice it, it'll blow up all one drops. And the reason why I'm choosing to play three copies of Ratchet Bomb and one explosive as opposed to just a bunch of engineered explosives is because this is a card Aspiring Spike has been testing, and I think I agree with him in that Ratchet Bomb is very underplayed. As for two mana, you can just set it there, and then against a deck like Creativity, which is the main target for it, Ratchet Bomb, you never have to invest any more mana into Ratchet Bomb. As soon as you play it for the two, every other turn after that, you can tap out as much as you like, and, you know, maybe you just tap six to play Titan and put the pressure on them. You just have a Ratchet Bomb ready to go to just sack and kill all their zero mana tokens on command, and if you were using explosives for the same purpose, then you would end up losing two mana every time you chose to keep up your explosives activation so this kind of inverts it where you pay the two up front but then from then on you have the ability anytime you'd like and that's really the main reason i'm playing ratchet bomb especially since extra copies of explosives past the first are usually geared at clearing away tokens um engineer explosives is a way to hedge against the creativity and the Rhinos matchups, but Ratchet Bomb does the exact same thing, if not better, against those decks. And against the decks like Hammer or, you know, Boggles or, you know, whatever, whatever you can think of that has, you know, various one and two mana permits you want to blow up, Ratchet Bomb comes in clutch against those as well, although it is a turn or two slower, depending on what you're trying to hit. It still does the same basic job. That said, we are playing one copy of Explosives so we can transmute for it with Talari West. Say we're playing against Merfolk or we're playing against um, as more food type strategies, we have a explosive we can transmute for. So that's why we're playing one explosive and three Ratchet Bombs. We're also playing three copies of Relic of Progenitus. This is my choice to combat the Scam and Murktide matchups. It has come to my attention that you actually can't use Relic to stop the turn one Scam, Grief, or Fury because the Scam spell will go to the graveyard and they'll have that in their graveyard for when the Undying goes on the stack. So in order for Relic to stop an Undying trigger against Scam, you have to have a mana up to pop it. But even still, it's nice to have a early, playable, useful card against Scam that we can cycle if we need to find another card. It's also a great card against Murktide as it lets you control their graveyard more selectively and stop Delirium from being a problem to prevent early Murktides. Relic combined with Endurance tends to be very strong in those matchups, especially since we have a mainboard bog to help us seal up game ones if we can get to the point of resolving a titan and so we have relic of genitus for those cases we also have one copy of atrax's fall as a additional way to blow up an artifact or enchantment for example against amulet or against hammer time being able to hit sagas and various artifacts is good but also because as a one of at sorcery speed i should note this is a card that can deal with a murktide or with a bird lawyer i forget what it's called Man, I can't remember the name of the card. But you know what I'm talking about. The two mana card that loots whenever they cast a second spell or whenever anybody casts a second spell. You, you know the card. Maybe I'll put it up on screen if I remember it and editing. But regardless, we have one card to deal with those situations. We have a couple of dismembers for the Yogg matchup as the main target, but also just as additional one mana ways to deal with a Ragavan against the Ragavan decks. We have one copy of Dragonlord Atarka, and this is not actually because we're playing Dramatic Entrance this is just because I believe that Dragon Lord Atarka is a good additional threat to bring it up in the uh, Blood Moon matchups, as you only need a single green to cast this. It might as well be six colorless and a green against Blood Moon decks, which I think is extremely useful. It's an additional threat that we can play against the Yawgmoth deck if we get our Primeval Titans Necromanched or something like that, in addition to Atraxa, of course. And in general, I just have been impressed by this card out of the sideboard. I've even played one in the main, and so... We're giving it the nod here. And that about covers everything. Of course, we're playing our third Poseidon for the Blood Moon matchups and all that, but that's everybody knows about that. So anyways, thank you guys for watching to this point. And if you've gotten this far, then go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And let's jump into match one. Also, it seems that MTGO is a little laggy for me at the moment. So if there's any lag in the first match or two here, then uh, hopefully it'll be not present in the following matches, but let me know in the comments if there's anything that you think I can improve about my setup here. So also I should mention while we're waiting for this match to start up, I am not mistaken. I don't know how to play this deck. I will probably sideboard very differently than mistaken would with the deck as well. And that honestly, that's part of the intention of me playing the deck is to see 
what it's capable of in the hand of different players and to see if there are different sideboard strategies that can be applied to this deck. And I just want to see what it's about. But don't expect perfect play from me because that is likely not to happen. Alrighty, we're in here and on the play, which is a great start. We have a Saga Amulet hand. We have the Boros Garrison in hand as well, though, which is not my favorite thing in the universe. Um... We actually have a Traxa mana for whatever that's worth. We're also going to be missing a land drop on turn two, however. Although we can just make a construct, I suppose. So we have four in the pack for Grazer and the Titan, but we can't necessarily haste. Hmm. Yeah, we can't haste unless we were to draw a Dryad or something or like a Slesny Sanctuary. Sanctuary would let us haste off of Valakut Slayers. Uh, but I mean, I think we're still supposed to keep this. It's a little weird, but we also could just top deck a another land that we don't have to have to balance something to our hand with <laughs> on turn two here. And then most of our problems are solved, except for the hasting one. But Titan with double amulet should be pretty good, I would assume. We'll see. If we draw another ramp spell, then we might even be able to do two Titans on turn three here. So definitely something to be thinking about. Opponent is deep in the tank on their hand. They mulligan to six. I suppose depending on what we draw, we could potentially just pick up the Saga on turn two. We play turn one Saga, amulet, turn two, bounce land, pick up Saga, maybe play a three drop or something, and then still have a turn three Titan just off of one amulet. That could be reasonable. We'll see. It's also worth noting that at some point, if we were to draw dramatic entrance, we could pack for Atraxa to put the Atraxa into play i don't know how good of a play that would be but our opponent leads on tap stomping ground <laughs> well uh that doesn't really help us in any way so i guess we'll just make a construct here and pass and set up for this upcoming turn i don't want to always deal the amulet and i'm just gonna set up for the double amulet this upcoming turn there are draws we have off the top that let us actually haste titan here or put a second titan into play so opponent has cavern on goblin so we're playing against a john goblins deck weird to see stomping ground out of goblins and they do have the turn to snoot so see what's going on cavern of soul can't say that one's particularly helpful all right we'll pick up our second amulet here it's worth noting that if we had a zeusa here we'd easily be able to double haste our titan and force our opponent to chump with the snoop but we don't have that to our disposal so we can simic up to five pack for dryad play dryad leaving two floating play second bounce land i think dryad lets us haste here off of balcut slayers i don't know that we're actually killing our opponent or anything like that though it's definitely better than not hasting so we'll lead on simic here right we've floated our mana let's go pack for dryad i guess there is some concern about whether or not we can pay for our pack i didn't really do any calculation i think if our dryad stays in play i think we can definitely pay for our pack even if our dryad doesn't we just have to search for two green sources on the attack and of course the reason we can do this is because our dryad lets us float white mana with our lands since our lands are all basic land types that includes planes so we'll get slayers val cut here float white red and then untap both again all right We'll stagger these triggers, like our red and white here. And now we just have to get two green lands that stay in play and hope our opponent doesn't have a blood moon, I suppose. I think I'm swinging with the construct as well. Worth noting here that double striking only does 16 plus 3 to 19 damage to our opponent, so it doesn't force them to block. So there's really no point in going for that. I guess double force would potentially be the safest thing. I think it's just double force, to be honest. They could have... I, I don't know if they could have anything to actually kill our Titan here. Right? Maybe like a main deck Terminate or something. But if we get anything other than green sources, then them killing our Dryad would be a problem. So we'll just get double forest here and not uh, overcomplicate things. And we'll pass back to our opponent. Not quite the uh, turn three kill here, thanks to this... Boris Garrison plaguing our hand, unfortunately, but, you know, still getting a Titan into play and putting our opponent to nine and having Valakut plus Dryad in play and being able to pay for our pack and having Blood Moon covered is great. We might still just die to the combo here, of course, if they just slam Bogger Harbinger and they concede the game. So I guess they were fetching to see if I could get a Harbinger off the top. Cool. Well, this is an interesting matchup for a Ratchet Bomb. I don't know... If Ratchet Bomb is particularly good against them, since it takes so long to tick up, but it's definitely not bad. Explosives is great here, and so is Dismember to kill their Snoops. And I like Atarka, as it gives us a packable way to kill something of theirs, like if they have a turn two Snoop, and we can just pack for Atarka and kill it. That might be our better bet than just slamming a Titan that doesn't guarantee that we untap. So, Besage you for potential Blood and Moons makes sense, because Cavern is not doing anything, and usually they would play Magus instead, but sometimes you see Blood Moon, so it's worth thinking about. I'm not expecting Thought Seizes, so I think Cutting Explorer is fine, and definitely bringing in Ratchet Bomb, I think. Seems like an interesting Dramatic Entrance matchup. I don't think that putting an Interactor into play is particularly good against them, but it does speed up our Titan by a turn, potentially. We could also be trimming Entrances and Interactors and keeping Explorers, just because the combo is a little fragile against a deck that's just trying to kill us 
in a way that we are have problems interacting with, I suppose. I feel like I'm interested in swapping these out for the explorers, to be honest, because this also helps us play around thoughts. He's a bit dramatic entrance is particularly bad against discard spells. Like if we're trying to entrance a big creature into play and then we get our entrance taken or they take the big creature, then the entrance does nothing. So then we can trim one more. Admittedly, I actually think the third ratchet bomb could be overkill, but I'm going to I'm gonna just give the faith here that the Ratchet Bomb is good enough and trim a pack so we don't lose to our Summoner's Pack killing us with a Magus on the opponent's side of the field. So who knows? Maybe the Ratchet Bomb will be too slow. I, honestly, I feel like it probably will, but they choose to be on the play, of course. And we have a Zero Lander. Technically, we have a land, but uh, it's not a real land, so we'll mulligan. And uh, this hand is lacking a Bounce Land, but otherwise has everything we want, so we'll keep it. And the question is, do we keep the Explorer to go looking for a Bounce Land, or do we keep the third land drop? Honestly, I think I'm keeping the Explorer, because we have a draw off the top right now to see if we hit a Bounce Land, and then the turn after we hit a draw, and if we don't find it, we can always explore a little bit later. So they lead on Ignoble Hierarch. I don't know if that's good news for us or not, to be honest. It doesn't seem like great news. It's a little unusual they're playing Noble Hi Ignoble Hierarch, though. They could just have a turn two, like, Magus or Blood Moon here, I suppose. I mean, if they have that, then uh, good beats, I guess. <laughs> Or they could just pass. They can do that too. Maybe they're attacking for a one here and then playing land plus a thing. No, just going to second main phase for no reason, I guess. Um, I can't say I'm happy that I called it, but I did call it. So we'll play Cavern on nothing since Blood Moon, and then we'll explore. <laughs> we found the Bounce Land. I think we're probably supposed to play it so we can transmute Beseju for Talaria West after playing Dryad. That re that relies on our Dryad actually surviving, but, you know, there's no guarantee that our Dryad will still be alive the turn after we play it, especially since our opponent just played a Snoop. They don't have a... Oh, they do have a Black Source, though. Yeah, this is looking like a game we don't win, but we'll see. Maybe they don't have the Harbinger also, uh, so we'll just slam this Dryad and, I guess, pass back. I mean, the reality with Amulet is when you play this deck, you're going to lose some amount of games to Blood Moon, and there's just nothing you can really do about it. Admittedly, this is a matchup where if we had Force, I probably would bring it in because it also hits Aether Vial, so definitely a uh, strike against the... Uh, disinclusion of Force of Vigor from the sideboard, but, you know, it's not a huge deal. They paid the Echo, which is probably a good sign for us. <laughs> Redundant Blood Moon is not quite as good, though. Although, I guess it does cut us off of our Talaria West, since now these tap for only red again. Uh, so, I guess we should be exploring here. Vesuva doesn't really do anything, but, hey, this might be a great game for our Dragonlord Dramoka tech, if we can find another basic to cast a Summoner's Pack. Them drawing a basic Swamp is pretty unfortunate for us, though, to be honest. I mean, they have Ignoble Hierarch, so maybe it's not really fixing their mana at all anyways, but Simic Growth Chamber. All right, let's explore again, I guess. Dismember. Uh, yeah, I mean, we should probably just kill this Snoop right now, I would say. Get gone, Snoop. The second we draw a Beseju... No, Beseju doesn't do anything. I guess Besejuing the second Blood Moon re-unlocks our mana for all colors. So Beseju actually does something here because of timestamps. Or another Dryad is actually great. We'll play that one. And now we get to unlock all of our colors of mana again. Honestly, if we draw a land, I think I'm just going for the uh, Dragon Lord because I think Dragon Lord closes this game faster than Titan probably does. Although I guess... That would be bad against a third Blood Moon or a way they could kill like a Dryad if they had like Terminate or something. I don't know if I really expect that though. This would be an interesting game to win, especially if our opponent just keeps top decking lands. That's uh, acceptable on my opinion or in my opinion. Matron is not great news for us. Yeah, they just get to put a uh, Goblin that'll kill our Dryad into play and then we'll be very sad. I guess Basic Force is still our best top deck. And even then, I'm probably still just packing for Dragon Lord. Kiki, huh? Okay, well... Yeah, we really want to get a Dragon Lord into play. Let's kill this thing. That one's got to be gone. Go uh, two, one, one, one. <laughs> Seems pretty good. All right, land. Any land drop, especially basic forest, but any land. Ratchet bomb. That one is not super fantastic. Um, Not that there's really anything we can do about this. I guess we could potentially get Ratchet Bomb up to three. <laughs> um, We could also just slam a Titan right now. I don't know how good that is. I feel like the only way we get out of this is drawing exactly another Pact or the Dragon Lord. So I kind of am in interested in not packing here, but seems wrong. I think we have to Pact since our Dryad is going to die if they get to make a copy of this and sh kill our most recent Dryad. I think we have no choice but to put a Titan into play, but this Kiki was actually a pretty good fetch for them if we didn't hit a land, which we didn't. I guess we can play Ratchet Bomb after we play Titan. Time stamps. Time stamps, everybody. Just put that one in play. It's actually kind of unfortunate we had to play a TUS earlier because uh, otherwise we'd be able to transmute this for a land since we have the blue mana unlocked, but, you know, that's all right. One Forest is definitely correct. The other one probably doesn't matter as much. I think probably just double Forest is fine. They're, they're not going to kill it, though. I guess if we were to somehow kill... We're not going to kill both Blood Moons, I don't think, so 
let's just get double forest not make things too complicated and i guess we will just play this ratchet bomb for whatever that's worth in two turns this will answer uh snoop if our opponent manages to find manages to find one but uh that uh, seems a little slow. Opponent is making a copy of Matron right now. You got it, I suppose. I guess Ratchet Bomb does kill all of our opponent's token copies of Snoop. Oh no, it doesn't, because the tokens the tokens now have the same mana cost. It used to be that all tokens had a cost of zero, but that is no longer the case. So I don't know when they made that rules change. If you do, then make a comment about it, because all I know is that it changed. I just don't know when they get Munitions Expert, which is exactly as expected. And I guess we will just play this Ratchet Bomb, as it's the only real plan we have going. So we'll pump this guy up and. And pass it back to our opponent we put a charged counter on red face menace it, i don't know you can't see that because the log is trapped but uh back here in this general direction it said put a charge counter on red face menace so um apparently this ratchet bomb is named after me we're still probably super dead here but you know yeah this is not looking great for the ratchet bombs i think that in a matchup where our opponent's stuff all costs like one and two then ratchet bomb is more defensible but in this matchup where their key cards are two with the snoops or higher than that even threes with blood moons it just takes too long for ratchet bomb to get active so i think in game three i might side them back out although we're on the play so maybe ratchet bomb is a little bit better but honestly i think i'd rather just try to go all in on the combo aspect and try to rush a blood moon before it happens all right our opponent's being slow here but honestly i just don't think we're winning this game so i'm gonna go ahead and concede because uh there's no reason to sit here and wait I guess if we had drawn exactly... Actually, there's nothing we could draw here because we have to pay for Summer's Pack, so none of our draws matter. Also, it's coming to my attention that maybe we should be boarding out Urza's Saga against their possible Blood Moons, especially with Turn 1 Hierarchs being a thing. Don't know that I really want to do that, but we also can bring in Atrax's Fall for their Aether Vials and moons don't know if that's something i really care to do i think on the play we probably do want the sagas because they have to have a turn one mana dork to get us with blood moon if we play turn one saga i also don't know that i actually want a Traxxas fall as a dead card so i think i'm pretty interested in just running it back i guess if we were to cut the ratchet bombs then we would bring in like cavern and Atraxas fall i guess i don't know maybe summoner's pack honestly i think that ratchet bomb is just better than those cards at the moment though maybe having the extra land is better but <laughs> this hand is not fantastic especially since we have three of a legendary land in our hand so we'll mulligan this one sheesh this hand's not great either we play valakut sanctuary turn three dryad and if we have an untapped land we have turn four titan with valakut already in play and dryad already in play i don't know if this is going to be good enough, though, to be honest. If our opponent just plays a turn two snoop, we basically just lose. But I think maybe mulliganing for an amulet hand is probably better than keeping this, because there's a chance this works out, but we also have a pack that we might die to if we don't kill them on the spot, assuming we even get there. So I'm in a mulligan. If they have thought seize, then we'll get got, I suppose. All right, this hand's not that particularly great, but at least if we draw a explosives or ratchet bomb, we can play it on turn two. We have a blocker. We have Titan Mana ready to go. I think we're putting back Summoner's Pack and um, probably the Slayers. Our opponent uh, mulligan to six. See if they join us at five. Uh, they mulligan to five, so we'll, we'll keep this. Bottom that Summoner's Pack. I guess we could keep the pack and potentially pack for dryad but nah we'll just draw more ramp we have four explorers that we can draw as well so which also unmulligans us by the way <laughs> or sort of at least it feels like explore unmulligans us especially with the double bounce land hand Our opponent is deciding i guess whether or not to mull the four or not seems to be the occurrence they're deep in the tank on their five card hand maybe they're deciding what to put back that could be it. All right, we'll lead off on our Grazer as expected. Our opponent did keep their five, put Sanctuary into play. I guess maybe it's right to put Rot Farm because we did bring in Dismembers. It doesn't really matter. Honestly, we want to draw a Dryad or Explore here. So one of those cards or Amulet, I guess, is not bad. That makes a Grazer a live top deck or second Amulet. So I'll take Saga. If they turn two Blood Moon us, then they deserve it. This also lets us hold up Besaidu. So uh, Snoop seems like a Snoop. All right. Uh, yeah, they have Expert on top. That's fine, I guess. I mean... Expert is one of their better cards against us, other than Snoop. Like, Snoop and Expert are the two main cards that we don't want to see. But, you know, they don't have a, quite a big board yet. So, I guess we'll play Forest out here. We'll make our token and then just hope Titan next turn does something. Maybe we could eventually get our way to that Dragon Lord. Although, currently on this board set, it looks like that would be asking a lot. But Amulet off the top probably just kills our opponent straight up. Assuming that we're not dead straight up. <laughs> Blood Moon on top. You want to fetch that one away, opponent? I don't mind if you do. It's also worth noting that they probably don't have a moon in hand because they would have casted that turn instead of the snoop, I think. But they uh, Cavern on Goblin. <gasps> I'm so shocked. Cavern on Goblin? No way. Or they could just have Boggart Harbinger and then we're dead. So for those of you who... I guess we should make sure they don't have the Kiki in hand. But while they're going about the motions of it, I'm going to yield until instep. I'll explain the combo. So the idea is to put Kiki Jiki Mirror Breaker on top of their deck and then 
That gives Snoop the ability to tap to make a copy of Kiki. I was wondering why they're not going for it, but they can do it at instant speed here, so it doesn't matter. Um, what they do is they tap the Conspicuous Snoop to make a copy of a target non-legendary creature targeting itself, and that makes a new Snoop that's untapped with haste, and they can tap it to target a Snoop, and then they get another copy, and so on and so forth. And then the last Snoop, they tap to copy Bart Harbinger, in fact, and then they search for Sling Gang Lieutenant, which lets them basically do a bunch of drain and gain to us where we lose infinite life and they gain infinite life. Suppose they could have the other combo piece in hand right now, though, since they didn't go straight for the combo, so I don't really know what their plan is here. Yeah, I mean, there is a small chance that they have only one Sling Gang, sling gang and they've drawn it, but I'm not going to make our opponent do that, so we'll just go ahead and scoop it up. Not a huge deal. My MTGO is absolutely dying right now i don't know why <laughs> well um that's unfortunate but that does make us oh and one and i'm gonna go ahead and play one more match although <laughs> that is assuming that mto doesn't just crash and burn immediately i don't know why it always gets slow like this when i just when i start to record obs currently says it's only using 30 percent of my cpu so i don't think it's that it's probably just the internet i guess i could run a speed check. all right we have our very first atraxa in the opener here um, not that that's necessarily a good thing, although if we draw a dramatic entrance, then maybe that's a great thing. We get to graze out a saga on one, and we have Titan to eventually get to, so I guess we'll keep this. Just drawing three basics against a goblin guide, hopefully. Hopefully our opponent plays a goblin guide here. To spin crashing footfalls. Oh, goodness, that is not what we want to see. Still slamming our grazer into saga here. Yeah, footfalls is not a super fantastic matchup, especially since we don't have anything to really do. I guess we have the ratchet bombs and explosives to deal with their tokens, but swan song to stop a force of vigor or like a uh, ice that's trying to tap our titan seems to be the best tech for that matchup that said it does require you to splash blue which i think is kind of difficult to do so all right amulet is a decent top deck if we could top deck a bounce land then we're pretty much golden Ooh, probably should have played cavern on giant there instead of the forest because recently these uh footfalls decks have been playing mystical dispute so in the main board i should say so definitely something to be cognizant of when you're playing and I just kind of autopiloted the force into play. Not a great place to be, but hopefully they'll just tap out for a shardless here and we'll top deck bounce land and just like kill them. Especially since we're not relying on a, uh, there's a shardless. Especially since we're not relying on like a summoner's pack to get our Titan into play. So I, bounce land is our best top deck. I don't know if second amulet would do anything, but man, empty Joe is so slow. I can't even just double tap my basic, like click, click, and it tap both of them for mana. That's uh, that's how, how much lag we're struggling with here. No bounce land, which is extremely unfortunate. I think in that case, I'm probably going on the construct beat plan and getting a map here. We can map for bounce land. I don't know. Maybe we're still, oh wait, this list doesn't play map. I totally forgot about that. So I guess we're not getting expedition map. Uh, we'll play cavern on giant now and just uh, top deck the, so many, there's so many creature types on that list i wasn't uh i wasn't prepared for it yeah so we'll just do this and now we have a couple rhinos of our own so to speak i actually i think we can swing here bad against violent outbursts i suppose but i'm gonna swing they might trade a rhino and if they don't then honestly maybe we're attacking them although with a uh, footfalls on suspend which i forgot was there the, probably the attacking there is not great but putting them to 12 is val cut relevant also if we manage to get this attracts into play say off of a dramatic entrance then uh i am going to take my block with a grazer here as well uh, i was going to say if we put attracts into play then not only does it set us up with a bunch of cards but it blanks their rhinos for the most part they have the outburst here not the you just deal oh they have gone to bounce a token whatever we're at least we're only taking two damage here so bounce lane off the top still what we want of course we can't have that because you can't always get what you want so we'll play land and pass and uh probably just be in very big trouble honestly so if we draw a bounce land we can double titan and double haste i guess also dramatic entrance is now a good top deck because we have a fifth land drop to play. So we can entrance a Titan and haste and double strike it, I guess. The uh, third copy of Amulet is not really helping us out here. So I guess we'll move to the next uh, game, this time involving Ratchet Bomb and Engineer Explosives. So exciting. All right, Explosives and Ratchet Bombs come here, come to Papa. We'll bring in this Poseju and cut all of these Urza Sagas because they have Blood Moons, Mages of the Moons, and or Force of Vigor. Keep the Valcut though. Uh, we don't need Bajuka Bog. Atraxa's Fall can kill Merktide or um, their three mana flyer that bounces something. Uh, Brazen Borrower, it can also kill Blood Moon. I don't know if that makes it good enough, but I don't mind it. Uh, it's probably not great. Atarka's good against them, though. Uh, so we gotta cut one more card. I think Dramatic Entrance is probably good here, assuming they don't force it. Uh, and speaking of force, we'll trim one pact and call it a day. Although maybe we have a lot of two drops here, but all right, on the play. And we have Amulet. We have an tap Land. We have an Answer to Moon. We have Ratchet Bomb. And we have both of the non-Titan threats. Uh, we'll definitely keep this, though. 
Hopefully Ratchet Bottom will show its ugly teeth here. They mulligan to five. Unusual. I don't typically see Rhino's opponents mulligan so aggressively. Unless they're looking for specifically Blood Moon. Which, uh, again, if they have Blood Moon, that's good beats, I guess. We do have a Besaidu to deal with it, though. And we can hold it up, although we don't need to, since Ratchet Bomb, we can do it instant speed with zero mana. But that doesn't mean we can't hold up Besaidu. If they have the Force, I guess, for Ratchet Bomb. Honestly, I think if they force this Ratchet Bomb, we're just chilling. Especially since we have Explosives now as well. Uh, so we'll play Simic. They can't, they can't Blood Moon us just yet, so I feel pretty comfortable tapping out for Ratchet Bomb this turn. Don't want to play the Engineered Explosives also. Actually, do we? Because if they force, they're going to hit Amulet and one of our things here. So I'm actually okay with playing Explosives on zero here. All right, and now we just need to find some more ramp and we'll be good. Play Misty. Land off the top, I guess, is best. Land or a ramp spell. We don't want to have to leave this Besaidu in play because our opponent is definitely setting up for a Blood Moon here. So they're going to ice us, which is fine. We can always just play Simic and bounce the other one to hold up Besaidu. So it's not a big deal. Dramatic Entrance is a very dramatic top deck. We will take those. Yeah, still holding up a Sage here because our opponent very, very obviously has the moon effect. We're hoping it's the blood moon variety and not the magus of the moon variety, but you know, can't really control that. So we'll just play around what we can. And we very well may, may be playing an Atraxa very soon. And we'll still just untap here. Vesuva is a great one. We'll copy our opponent's snow-covered forest. And then we have dramatic entrance for Atraxa the following turn. So unless our opponent decides to commit something to the board that we would like to Atarka, but even then I still think just putting Attract into play is the is the move. Especially since we can hard cast Atarka eventually. Eventually, theoretically. And because we have Ratchet Bomb, we don't have to fear tapping out for dramatic entrance because we can still ratchet bomb I i'm gonna keep harping on this they are probably holding up force or subtlety here but i mean it is what it is reminds me of that meme where it says i'm running out of ways to say it is what it is we're definitely slamming the dramatic entrance here forcing our opponent to have something let's see if we can put an atraxa in play ah atraxa hit the battlefield Atraxa trigger. Let's see what cards we find. Our opponent just scoops to the dramatic entrance Atraxa, plus the, you know, millions of ways to deal with rhinos. So they never even played the moon effect that they were fetching for, so maybe they never had it. I don't know. I'm a little confused here. Oh, I guess they saw the Besaidu, so they knew we were holding up Besaidu anyways. We just never didn't hold up Besaidu, so that was cool. Well, I mean, that's exactly what we want to do, so uh they obviously have moon effects. Maybe we should be bringing in Atraxa's fall, but honestly, I I'm good. I'm chill. We'll just uh, run it back, as they say. Maybe this is too many additional threats. Maybe because we're playing Dramatic Entrance and Attract, so we don't need the Atarka, but I'm still playing it. Uh, this hand has Titan Mana. It has Grazer and Amulet, so we'll keep it. We can even play around a Moon Effect. Our opponent actually keeps seven cards this time, but uh, unluckily for them, we also keep seven cards. Stomping Ground, Suspend Footfall. This is one of the few matchups where I think them suspending Footfalls actually matters, like, a lot. Also, Second Amulet is a great top deck if they don't force us. Either force. I'm talking about Negation or Vigor here. We can just turn two Titan them here and have enough green to just put Garrison into play and be able to copy it. And <laughs> Second Titan, huh? Uh, interesting. I mean, I, I think we're going for it. I don't know what else they could have here, to be honest. So we'll play Sanctuary. Oh, wait. We can't, we can't haste off Garrison, but we can leave enough white floating because we are playing enough copy a sanctuary to naturally draw it so uh yeah we need to pick up the sanctuary here though sadly like razor I, and if they have ice here it's not gonna work because we have two titans so we are playing around ice here as well so we'll do this pick up our forest we don't even have to worry about pack not packed about um our opponent having a blood moon here because we don't have any packs to pay for so and our opponent scoops it up well i am very very pleased to win the match against what is traditionally a horrible matchup we got to do the dramatic entrance thing, and it actually looked pretty decent. Also a big plus for the racket bombs in the sideboard, so yeah, all right. Well, we are now one and one, and I know that the lag is probably pretty bad, so this is going to be the last match I played tonight, but honestly, I'm just enjoying this too much, and we just put an Atraxa into play, so we, we got to go to the third match. This one's for me. It's not for you. I, I got to play this. Our opponent's on the play. Our opponent playing with a username Goblin King with a one. Does this mean that we're playing against goblins for the second time tonight? Quite possibly. The five lander amulet titan hand. We do have Saga though. No map to get bounce land, worth noting, but that's all right. We'll keep it. We can top deck ramp. We can top deck uh, bounce land. There's a lot of good draws for us here, so definitely keeping here. We have the natural bog if our opponent is juking us with the name and is actually playing like Murktide or Dredge or something. Let's get to natural bog them. One of my favorite things to do is just play a Bajuka Bog against an opponent who is fuming because we drew Bajuka Bog and it actually matters. Oh my goodness. It's actually goblins for the second time. 
and our opponent leads on Skirk Prospector. Ugh. Well, Grazer is a great top deck. This lets us get value out of our Saga here. So we'll slam this one out. Opponent is on the Skirk Prospector build, which means they might be more in on the um, newer two mana Goblin Lord that exiles a card wet that they can play whenever it dies. It or another goblin, I should say. Mainboard Thoughtseize as well is extremely unfortunate for us in this situation. That said, if they take Amulet, we have a redundant copy in play. And if they take Titan, we have many, many threats that we could draw. I do think it's possible in this matchup we should be cutting the Atraxas and Entrances because of the presence of Thoughtseize. I think that in accommodation with the fact that we're just dying to their combo anyways, makes me very interested in, well, not having dead cards in the deck. Uh, so we can either make our Saga value here or we can explore to try to set things up. And I think exploring is going to be the better choice. Although I guess if we're going to be exploring, we probably want to play the amulet first so we can keep Besaju in hand in case they have a main board Blood Moon or something weird. I think I'm playing out Tulare West. It would be bad if we draw exactly second amulet into or Ursimic Growth Chamber or something, but we'll just do this. We found Bounce Land, which is great. Now we just need to find the other missing piece, which is a Titan. We'll bog their Thoughtsies away because I don't like it. We'll pass back and just hope that we top deck something castable. We have a Traxa mana here, by the way. Honestly, this is pretty sick, having the uh, only blue and black singleton lands in our deck in play, and then Sanctuary being the missing piece to cast a Traxa. So if we top deck a Traxa here, we can just put it into play, which is pretty sick. They Matron here off of the Skirk Prospector, presumably because they don't have a third land drop here. So they're, they might be a little slow on this snoop, although we can't punish them with the lack of threats that we have here. There's also no map to get, so we're just getting the uh, amulet. By the way, I don't know how I feel about the lack of expedition map. I feel like map is very good, but especially in a list like this where you're cutting, you need to make room for the like, like the combo cards. I think it makes sense to not play the map is what it is. We can still cast Atraxa if we draw it. So, I mean, now they have a snoop in play though. Let's see if they have the third land. On the top they do. Dang, we might just be dead to the combo now. We need to find Titan off the top ASAP. Grazer is not Titan. Um, Yeah, if this was a Simic then we could do Tolario West things here, but that is not the case. Dang. Well, uh, I guess we just hope that they don't have the thing. We can also besage you to mess up their top card when they go to copy Snoop. Although I guess they can elect not to search. I think it's a May ability because they may search, but maybe they'll mess up and search. So let's pass it back. Uh, You know what? I'm feeling it. Let's attack for three. Maybe they chump with the matron or they just go to 15. That's fine too. If they have the combo card, then we can potentially mess them up with Poseidon. They have Boggart Harbinger, so we'll let them search here, and when they put the thing on top, we'll hit a land with our Poseidon, and uh, if they search because they don't realize it's a May, then we don't lose the game here, but all likelihood we're going to game two, so. All right, let's go for the Poseidon here, see if they want to search here. They elect not to search. Well, <laughs> our opponent has bested us. <laughs> Man, too bad that they didn't do the thing that would lose them the game for no reason. You never know. Sometimes opponents make those sort of plays. Uh, so we want explosives here because it's fast enough to kill a Snoop if we have four mana. Uh, we want dismembers. We want attract the, not attract, a, a Tarka. We have two different AT named cards, which is fascinating if you ask me. Attraxa's Fall, killing Vile or Moon is probably good enough. So I'll bring it in. And Besager is obviously good here. Don't need the Bog. Um, on the play, do we want Saga? I feel like we probably do. Actually, they're playing the uh, version that has the mana goblins. Eh, whatever. If they have Moon, I think we'll just die to it. I don't know. I don't know. I'll, I'll come back on that one. We're going to get rid of the Atraxas and the Entrances, though, sadly, because this is a Thoughtseize matchup and a, ma a combo matchup, and these cards are for the grindy decks. So <laughs> we'll uh, just get those out of here. Could just submit it, or we could switch some Sagas for Ratchet Bombs if we're feeling like playing around Blood Moon. I don't really think that Ratchet Bomb is good enough, though. I'm just going to run it. We'll just simply not get got by a Blood Moon. It's just very simple. They just won't have the Blood Moon. My sideward plan is for them not to have Blood Moon. All right, so we'll be on the play. I feel like just expecting them not to have the Moon is a little more reasonable when we're on the play. I mean, this hand's not fantastic. We get a turn four Titan with double Amulet, but we have the Sun Home in hand. I guess we can play it out by turn four, but uh, we have Talari West as well, so we can kill them on turn four if we don't die by turn three. If we Mulligan, we can find something a little better. This has the pieces we're missing for the most part. If we draw like an Explorer or Grazer, it doesn't really speed up our clock at all. Kind of feel like we ought to Mulligan this, to be honest, but I'm gonna Mulligan it. Uh, <clears throat> instant regret. We'll mulligan again. Never mind. We, this is what we wanted to do the whole time. This is the, I dare say, the perfect five, assuming that our opponent does not thought sees us. Our opponent is mulliganed to six. We'll see if they mulligan further. Uh, I think they kept their six. 
I doesn't really say exactly. We'll definitely keep this. We'll ship the stronghold that we absolutely do not want in our hand. And I guess a redundant bounce land. We'll ship the sanctuary, I guess, so that if they thought seize away our Titan and we get double amulet into play, we can transmute a Key West if we draw it. We'll lead on amulet and pass it back to them. We get to play turn two Dryad, turn three Titan with double amulet if our opponent just has absolutely nothing to interact. I think it, it would be very hard for them to interact with that. I have Chalice on zero. Okay, I guess. And to topple tap. <laughs> We have engineer explosives we can play with one colorless in order to get around the chalice if we wanted to. Honestly, it might be right to just uh to just play our explosives here on two. I mean, we're not using this mana otherwise. I don't think I'm interested in I mean, I guess if they have exactly thoughtsies, then we're gonna want to I mean, we also would have to draw one of two Tolari Wests. So I think it's just going to be more relevant to play Explosives on two here. Technically, if we were playing around exactly Thought Seas and us drawing Talari West, then we'd want to leave our Explosives in hand so we could tap Colorless and play Explosives for one with zero colors to get around the Chalice issue. And they do play a two drop into our Explosives, but it's not the two drop we care about. It's Horde Master, which is fine. And our opponent is dead. So we'll float a white here. We'll go get second Amulet and we'll kill our opponent. Of course, Dryad attacking for two here is uh, part of the key. So we'll hit five so we don't yield to the Amulets and we'll just uh, do the thing. Worth noting that we cannot cast the Summoner's Pack here or we will lose to the Chalice. So, I mean, we won't lose to it. We just, we can't plan to use Summoner's Pack in any meaningful way here. So that's all. We can get fancy here though and tap our on second untap of the growth chamber for a white so we can haste off of Valakut Slayer Stronghold. I am a fan of being unnecessarily fancy, so we'll, we'll go for that. And our opponent scoops it up, but it feels like, yep, all right. We get a game three here. <sighs> it's going to be an interesting one against Goblins for the second time. Going to game three. I think Ratchet Bomb is just too slow. We're on the draw against Blood Moons. Do we want Saga still? I mean, Ratchet Bomb is not that much better than Saga on the draw anyways. I guess Dramatic Entrance is technically going to speed us up a turn if we have Entrance plus a Titan, but it's also a dead card in hand against the Thoughtseizes. So like, I don't really know what the right decision here is. Honestly, I feel like just having Saga is fine. They'd have to have the turn three Moon. I think they only play like two in the sideboard anyways. I could be wrong on that. I am not super familiar with current goblins list but and they are playing the the horde master list that i was alluding to earlier with the, the plan to combo off with the mana goblin by the way have you guys heard of the card mind goblin just a random question so we get to turn one grazer turn two explore into turn three not even a titan because that'll be four mana five mana by turn three we can do better than this for sure we have the attractus fall and explore this is going to be a hand where we just hope and pray they don't blood moon us on turn three or turn two i suppose for that matter but we are going to keep this and just uh assume they don't have it put valcon on the bottom i suppose even if they do have blood moon we can kill it we're just going to be losing our saga to it which will be extremely unfortunate i guess we don't have to lose saga to the blood moon we can always just not play saga they didn't play the mana dork though so i'm just leaning on saga if we get blood moon we get blood moon is what it is we get to play explore this upcoming turn exciting exciting one of my favorite things to do in amulet is to cast turn to explore which it, or not even well yeah i guess turn to explore can be a sign that we're winning with double amulet but it also is a sign that we're casting explore and i like doing that we'll play our force our opponent led on the two drop that doesn't kill us instantaneously so let's hope they don't have the three drop that kills us instantaneously we just like losing that hard to, to the blood moon i don't really think so there's no point in that so we'll just play our our um us here also our goblins opponent has not drawn an aether vial which i mean i don't really have any super opinions about that i think there's a possibility that we would have attracts us fall the vial this turn if we if our opponent had played one on turn one or something instead of casting the explore but all right opponent don't blood moon you don't want to do it no they have swamp this is a blood moon i feel it already oh no no they're making goblin uncounterable so we dodge the blood moon we still don't have titan here we're like abysmally far away from casting primeval titan but oh no they accidentally tap. No, they have the Blood Moon as well. Well, that sucks. I guess we get free ramp here before we cast our Atraxis Fall, though. So, I mean, admittedly, of all the Blood Moons that have ever been cast against me, this one is not actually the scariest, believe it or not. We have our one of Fall to deal with that. We get free ramp out of it. So, thank you, Blood Moon. Amulet off the top is a pretty fantastic draw as well. So, we'll play this. We'll play our two cards and uh, we'll be chilling. I guess we could have played Saga that turn if we really wanted to, but I think doing it this way. So, if we draw a Titan or a Summon Attack, we can just Titan. Off of Bounce Land, it's probably better. This also lets us transmute Tolari West if we miss. So, assuming they don't have a, the second Blood Moon. They're not currently pressuring us, but that might be changing really quickly. Especially if they have a Snoop here. They have the Snoop. <laughs> and a Harbinger on top. Well, um, yeah, about that. I guess a Titan off the top maybe lets us get to Dryad. Or we could just not have that. We can transmute for Explosives on two, perhaps. I don't know that we have the mana to 
do anything with it though. We pay three, we have three. We we are one short of playing explosives and cracking it. I don't think there's anything we can do here. We can put a Titan into play and attack with it, and uh, then we just die. So uh, there's there's just nothing we can do. I guess. No, Explosives on Zero doesn't even work because all the Snoop copies actually cost two. Explosives on Zero would have been good here, but it's not now. I think we just die, assuming they don't have the uh, Kiki or Sling Gang in hand. I mean, I'm gonna... Oh, wait, we can't even Titan here, so... Uh, I guess we're gonna transmute expo for Explosives, play it on two, and pass, and then see if we're dead. Oh, wait, they get to cast Infinite... Or exile infinite cards. That'll be interesting. Yep. We lost the Blood Moon regardless, so <laughs> it happens. Let's transmute for Dismember. <laughs> We'll get our explosives and play it on two and swing it back to our opponent and see what happens. Probably dead here. Usually they play multiple copies of Sling Gang and only one copy of Kiki. So as soon as they put a Kiki on top, we're just going to scoop it up. So I guess we could potentially have Dismember here. We'll have them put the Kiki on top and then we'll scoop it up. Yep, they have the Kiki. Very sad. Scoop it up. Well, uh, I can't say that I'm super surprised losing the Goblins. Goblins is one of our worst matchups as Amulet Titan. Very, very unfortunate to play against it multiple times in the same league. But anyways, all right. We are back in here for match th four. Four. I definitely knew what match we were going into. Don't even question that. And uh, I'm excited to play some Atraxas once again. <laughs> what a hand this is. Okay, um, well, we're definitely keeping this one. Three amulets. Wow. Okay, our opponent leads on Mistress Bobble. Man, I was so shocked by the explosiveness of this hand that I just didn't even know what to say. So obviously with multiple amulets and grazer here, we're going to easily get up to Titan mana. But in addition to that, since we have both Growth Chamber and T-West, that means that we'll probably be able to transmute for a second Titan. I mean, honestly, with triple amulet or... <laughs> <laughs> or or quadruple amulet then uh i think we can basically do everything here i don't think i've ever drawn all four amulets in a hand before maybe one time but no i don't even think i've natural i don't think i've naturally drawn four amulets i've had four amulets in play thanks to saga but i think this is one of the first for me of course it's against the one deck that plays freaking counter spell of course but, you know, <clears throat> dramatic entrance, eh? So we can play Amulet, Grazer. No, Amulet, Bounce Land, Double Amulet. No, Amulet, Bounce Land, Amulet, Grazer up to four. That doesn't really get us anywhere. And we're definitely playing one of these things out. The dramatic entrance is interesting here. It probably eats a counter spell from our opponent's hand. So Grazer is only four mana, so we can't entrance our Titan here, very sadly. But, uh, you know, we'll just uh, deploy two more Amulet of Vigors and see what happens. This is, this is not what I was anticipating when I booted up the... Uh, Booted up the YouTube video here again. <laughs> you can probably tell how shook I am. I mean, we're absolutely playing fourth amulet this upcoming turn, right? Like, you can't not do that. Our opponent can't have double counter spell. So we can make eight mana dramatic entrance. And if they counter it, then we graze her in land again and tighten them. So actually here, we're seeing one of the strengths of dramatic entrance where our opponent has to counter this, assuming that we have a threat in hand, which in this case we do, but you don't always have to have a threat just to force them to counter dramatic entrance. But in this case, we're able to make enough mana to use dramatic entrance very effectively. If they spell pierce this amulet, I don't, think that I care. Even then we could just play land, grazer in land, and have dramatic entrance covered through a second spell pierce, and that's not, you know, calculating the fact that we might be able to go dryad into Titan afterwards anyway, so I'm just gonna slam the amulet and see what happens. <laughs> <clears throat> don't don't mind me and my four amulet of vigors on turn three. Just don't don't, you know, consider anything of, of this to be abnormal. This is absolutely the the typical amulet strategy you know honestly this this is anybody's game it's not very often that on turn three you have double double threat three counter spell so i think we'll pick up the bounce land here does our opponent have delirium they have artifact land creature instance they do have delirium it's not showing me four card types up here like it usually would which is really unusual I don't think I can take that to mean that they don't have a heat in hand just because it's not saying that, but usually it does. Uh, yeah, I guess we dramatic entrance. Is there a reason to do anything else first? I don't think so. Let's just cast it. Bang. Dramatic entrance. <laughs> Trigger shredder. Yep. Uh, important things here. You want to counter this one? They mill over spell snare. They have the counter spell. Uh, thank you very much, dramatic entrance, for doing your job. We'll play Dryad into Simic Growth Chamber and kill our opponent. Seems good. S dramatic Entrance being the all-star in this game, that's for sure. This is just too much. This is just absolutely too much. I'm still going to go through all of it, though. Let's get a second Titan into play. Or we could just win the game as well. I'm cool with our opponent conceding there because it makes things easier for us and saves us some time. So this is definitely a matchup where I think Dramatic Entrance is a good thing. I mean, it's honestly worth bluffing just casting a Dramatic Entrance on our opponent's incept, even if we don't have the threat, just to force them to counter it. Like... 
Obviously, that's a very high variance play, but, you know, something we can do. Are we supposed to keep in Atraxas because of Dramatic Entrance? I don't really know. We have a decent number of sideboard cards for this matchup. We want the Endurances to interact with their graveyard. This members for the turn one Ragavan issue. We already have Bog in the main deck. We have Relic of Progenitus and Atraxas Fall. And I actually think that bringing in some of these effects is relatively reasonable. I think Ratchet Bomb I like better than Explosives because we can tick it up to two to deal with Bird Lawyer, or three to deal with Blood Moon, or just pop it on one if it's what we feel like doing. I think since Atrax is basically uncastable, especially versus Blood Moon, we can trim it because putting in a Titan or a Tarka against our, our opponent's deck should be good enough to win the game. We can also trim one Summoner's Peck since we have extra threats and extra cyclers with the relics we can cut all the sagas because a blood moon is a card we don't have a map to cut as well usually i would board out map with the sagas but of course we're not playing expedition map so we can't do that i think we can cut all the explorers considering where you have a pile of relics to be playing and holding up mana for so don't need both of these clunky cards together maybe we only want like one ratchet bomb honestly ratchet bomb is slightly weak we could just trim another pack but i don't really love that i think it's important to have threat density i don't know it's probably summoner's pack though 28 lands is low. I don't love 28 lands, but all right, we'll, we'll trim like this. See what our dramatic entrance can do this time. Although I guess dramatic entrance does play weirdly into spell pierce. We have the turn one grazer. We have dramatic entrance and summoner's pack. We'll keep this. We have base land to help us play around a moon effect. The tracks is fall to deal with a merc tide or a blood moon could eventually come up if we were to draw it. We have our basic force ready to go to dig us out from underneath the blood moon if our opponent has it. They have ragaman. We're still going to slam grazer, but they might just kill our grazer. We'll see. <laughs> EE -E on one, huh? EE -E on one. That is an Amulet of Vigor. I'm going to graze her in a bounce land here so that if we draw a Dryad, we can still just play Dryad on turn two here. If they want to EE -E to blow up our Grazer, that's like fine. Point plays a tap demon. Kind of shocked on that one. They play Ragavan. It's a classic double one drop with explosives on one in play. Endurance is a fantastic pickup here. Like, theoretically, we could play land amulet. I mean, if they do that, they're just going to pop explosives, right? But in theory, if we played land amulet next turn, we could dramatic entrance titan into play. But I feel like we could take it a little slower. I think I'm inclined in playing forest and holding up the endurance here. If our opponent has blood moon, then... I guess we get got. So avoiding Blood Moon would be fantastic. They attack here. I'm snapping off the block as fast as humanly possible. Get in the way, Grazer. And our opponent just uh, swings it back. So honestly, do we even want to cast this Endurance? Because it's not like we can untap and do anything. I guess we could top deck exactly like Grazer or Titan and pack for Grazer to get to Dramatic Entrance to stop coming turn if our opponent counters our Endurance now. If I had a green source to cast Endurance this upcoming turn, then it would be very obviously just wait on the Endurance. But the fact that we're We'd have to play out Bounce Land to do that, like play Amulet and then Bounce Land. Very unfortunate. Plus, it's also not doing much since they only have one card type. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna untap here. Play it a little more patiently. Another Grazer is fine. So I guess if we had casted the Endurance and they countered it, then we would have had Dramatic Entrance into Titan this turn. Uh, but as it stands, we'll just play Valakut and pass, I guess. Next turn, we can play Amulet into uh, Bounce Land and have Dramatic Entrance ready to go. So we can end of turn Endurance, end of turn Endurance, and then untap an Entrance. And the Dramatic Entrance does not play into subtlety which would otherwise be a consideration here if we were trying to go into turn endurance untap slam titan that said we're probably we probably have no choice but to get a basic forest with our titan like bajuka bog basic forest so that we don't lose the blood moon uh, we'll block again maybe our opponent's trying to condition us into blocking so they can unholy eat our grazer and get through All right now we're definitely slamming endurance they want to counter this they're welcome to do so we might be winning two straight games against merc tide thanks to the card dramatic entrance and no nothing else wouldn't that be something and they're tapping out of their EE here, so we're dressed down. Ooh, a little nasty. Interesting. Member doesn't really do anything. I mean, we could still pack and dramatic entrance, but like it's not really doing anything. And it also loses to Blood Moon if we do that. So I guess I guess the line is to play Amulet Bounce Land and then entrance on their instep. Although we'd have to pack to do that. Like pack before we cast the entrance and then untap and pay for pack. Which might not be a bad thing anyways, but like that gets really weird. If this was like an actual threat in hand, that would be a little different. This is very strange. I mean, we're, don't know if we're actually supposed to be playing out our amulet into the explosives here either as well, which makes it extremely awkward. I'm going to play amulet into bounce land because we need to make our land drop here anyways. And then if our opponent like plays a fetch land and taps two to expressive iteration and cracks fetch land and then passes, we could like respond to their crack of fetch land by pacting and casting Dramatic Entrance or something like that. And they'd have to have exactly like Spell Pierce. And then we would be able to just pay for the pack and not be dead to Blood Moon. So, or actually no, 
I know the line. I know the line. We go to instep. We let them sack the dress down. And then still on our own instep, we packed in dramatic entrance. I, I think I found it. I mean, we could still just like get whatever we packed for killed. Swing with the endurance, I think. Value attack. Because like we can search for bog plus basic force. We're getting to do something cool with dramatic entrance, I dare say. All right. So dress down dies. But before we pass, I have effects. Cast summoner's pact. Our opponent's like, uh, what? Okay. Yeah, you got, you got a summoner's pact. That's fine. And then bang, dramatic entrance. On our instep. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Oh my goodness. Get got opponent. You thought that that dress down was preventing us from getting a Titan trigger this turn, but you were so wrong. You might even say that they were the wrongest. We get to bog away their graveyard, get a basic forest to not die to Blood Moon. <laughs> our opponent lost connection to the game. Well, if that was not a strong showing for dramatic interest, that I don't know what to tell you. That was probably the, my favorite match I've played in the last couple months if i'm being completely honest so let's just uh run it back uh play the last match out here and uh whew, oh my goodness i whew, there are no words for what just happened there you, you just have to if, if you don't know what this feeling is like you just have to play dramatic entrance for yourself because oh my gosh that that made the whole league worth it all right final match time Hopefully we're not paired against goblins for the third freaking time in this league. We have Atraxa, we have Sonus Pact, and we have four lands, none of which are bounce lands, none of which are sagas. Double basic is interesting, but we don't know what we're playing against. Same with these other two, like these are very conditional. Against some decks, these do nothing. There's, there are probably decks out there that neither of these lands is good against. Eh, we can mulligan to try to find an amulet hand, I think. This is an amulet hand. Oof, this hand's really good. We're bottoming the Atraxa here. Sadly, I don't think we've ever put an Atraxa into play. No, no, we did dramatic entrance one Atraxa uh, against Rhinos, I think it was. Man, this this deck is sweet. <laughs> this is not the, the time for Atraxa, though. Maybe later in the game, if we draw dramatic entrance and Atraxa, we'll see. Yeah, we're definitely keeping this one. Ship away that Atraxa and lead on Saga Amulet and just set up for a turn three kill. I like it. Hopefully we're playing against like Hammer Time or something. Kind of plays Polluted Delta. Could this be Mill? That would be the worst way to end the league here. Steam Vent? Is this, is this another Murktide gamer? Do, do we get to use the tech? Whew. We're going to get to lean on Dramatic Entrance once again. Maybe it won't go as smoothly as last time, though. We'll see. Admittedly, Dramatic Entrance, much like Through the Breach, is like one of the best things you can be doing against counter spells because usually you can't instant speed a Primeval Titan and add a discount for that. So if we use Grazer right now, then that means we get to make a Saga Construct, which is probably worth it, actually. It also means that if they have, like, Removal Spell or, like, dash ragavan or something i don't know on the play we probably don't need to worry about ragavan or something like that as much opponent has disconnected here they lost connection but i guess it just gives us time to think about the lines is it worth it to play the grazer out or do we hold the grazer in case our dryad dies i think maybe holding grazer is better it also means that if we top deck another titan or a dramatic entrance we might have the possibility of double threading this upcoming turn so i think it's better to hold on to the the grazer here and just not get saga value very sad but it is the case. Play Dryad. Play Valcut. Put our Amulet of Vigor Trigger on the stat. <laughs> Amulet of Vigor Trigger. And pass it back to them. We'll see what's up. We have 6, 10 mana. Down to 9. Up to 13 this upcoming turn with Grazer. Which is enough to Dramatic Entrance plus Titan or Double Titan. And they have to main phase a Consider here to hit Land Drop, huh? Uh, not looking great for them. They can set up... Uh, Unholy Key here, obviously. Can we play through Unholy Key? We make 10 mana. I guess we get to double Titan unless they have Spell Tier. No, no, no. With the uh, 13... I don't know. I don't know that we can play through Spell Pierce and Unholy Key at the same time. I don't think so. Because we make 6, 10, leave 4, uh, 13, Titan down to 7. Trans... Uh, Titan makes another 6 mana. I think we could probably play through Spell Pierce, especially with another copy Dry Eye here. So I'm going to float a white. So we can use this mana to haste off of Valkyrie Slayers eventually if we have enough mana to do so. I haven't done any calculation to make sure that that is what's happening, but usually it's a good uh, good tactic to take. We'll hit five just to make absolutely certain that we don't have yields to amulets here since we do have two of them in play. I would like my Simic Growth Chamber to appear on the battlefield. Thank you. I'm very grateful for the fact our opponent had to consider main phase there. Otherwise, we might be in a little worse shape. But considering our opponent doesn't have counter spell or dress down here, this lets us do the things that we really want to do. I'll resolve Titan first, and then we'll do the math as soon as Titan is resolved on whether or not we need to pick up Balance Land and cast Grazer before we transmute to Talari West or not. Play Titan, leave some blue floating, although we're still going to get 
QS. Our opponent just scoops it up. That's fine as well. Well, uh, <laughs> winning game ones against Marktide is not something I'm particularly accustomed to doing. This one did not involve using the card Dramatic Entrance, though. So, uh, yeah, so we basically have a giant pile of cards to bring in from our sideboard, including all of these, these two, these four. And uh, this is going to drive me crazy if I don't sort them by mana value. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that right quick. All right, Atraxa's got to go in this matchup, sadly. Uh, the Explorers are probably the worst card that we have compared to everything else. We trim, I think we trimmed two Summers Pack and the four Sagas last time. Yep. And I think that about covers it. So we'll run it back. I'm actually kind of excited to have played against Murktide twice, which is weird to say as the Amulet player because Murktide is not a great matchup. But like, this is the matchup where Dramatic Entrance seems to have a dramatic impact. This hand's weird. If we draw a bounce land, it's, I mean, it's really not that bad. I just wish we had a green source or a bounce land or something, but we have a draw off the top plus our draw on turn two to try to find something else. We get to play turn one relic and keep their graveyard in check. This hand is not great against Ragavan unless we top deck like Beseju or basic forest or something, but it has the instant speed threat and the Titan. It has Vesuva, so if we do get a base land, we can copy it with Vesuva and have Blood Moon covered. I mean, this has everything we need. I'm going to keep this one. It's a little risky, though. If we just never draw a green source, then we might be in trouble here. But, I mean, hopefully we'll just draw the green source. Play DRC. Don't play Ragavan. Play DRC. All right. That's step one accomplished. And that uh, was not a fantastic draw, but that's all right. We'll play our Slayers and our Relic, and we'll Relic them immediately so they have as few options as possible to choose from with Relic. Rather, take the choice away from them. Maybe they don't have another fetch land, for example, and now we're forcing them to not have land in their graveyard. Important to do this sort of thing immediately. Also, it lets us F6, which is... That's great value. See if they have the bird. Oh, they have Dash Ragavan. Hmm. Hmm. They're going to hit our basic forest. I feel it. They hit Valcut. Eh. I mean, it's annoying that they hit Valcut, but at least it wasn't our green source that we expertly top deck. Although we can't copy it with Grazer, thanks to the fact that Beseju is legendary. This is why I don't like to play a fourth copy of Beseju personally, because I find that that sort of clause comes up way too much. I guess we copy their basic land here in case of Blood Moon so that we can, like, if we get to resolve a Dryad and then they Blood Moon us, then this will still tap for green which is important, but obviously if they just Blood Moon us right now, it's kind of awkward, but let's just hope they don't have Blood Moon. And we need this Grazer for the Ragavan, so I'm not just going to let it die to an whole heat. I'd rather them actually attack into the Grazer and heat our Grazer, so that way we at least get a Ragavan block out of the way. It seems like they just have Blood Moon here, which is going to be extremely sad. And I think because of that, we have to pop Relic to try to dig for our basic force. I mean, there's not much we could have done about this. Maybe we could have mulligan, I guess. But like I said before, there's some there's some hands where we're just going to lose the Blood Moon, and that just is the extent of it. So basic force. I mean, we'll play a Bounce Land, that is what it is. Well, now we get to play the very fun game of sit here and die while we try to top deck one of four basic force and now i think we're pricing into blocking with the grazer because actually i'm not really sure why they didn't just i mean i guess they don't want to dash ragavan into a obvious grazer they have the heat as well which is ugh. i mean whatever <laughs> They don't just cast Ragavan out either. Kind of unusual. I guess they're afraid of us top decking for us and being able to slam a Dryad if they dash Ragavan now. Why not just play it? I don't understand. Like, they should have played it last turn, and then this turn, they're dashing it because we can't block, but, like, they could just play it. I don't... This is weird. Because now they are... They're priced into paying two to dash again. Which, obviously, we can't punish them because we're never going to draw the one of four basic for us. But, you know, yeah, I think we're pretty close to just conceding here especially since if we cast a dry and they just kill it then we just lose on the spot anyways so they continue to dash away their ragavan here if only our opponent could have been playing basic for us we'll just uh keep taking the beats simic growth chamber exiled at least we're getting closer to basic for us this member allows us to deal with the ragavan i guess although honestly it might be better to just kill the dragon's rage channeler at this point honestly nothing we we do here matters because they have infinite blue mana they're just going to counter whatever we do so i'm just going to sweep it up no reason to keep playing out an unwinnable game all right let's just not get got by blood moon this time that would be great and I still don't think I want to change anything, so we'll just hit submit. Getting soloed by Blood Moon A. Eh? All right, on the play. See a hand that has the turn one amulet. I guess or turn one grazer if we really wanted. We're missing like a threat here, but I mean, we have interaction that's meaningful. We have a sage for Blood Moon eventually. We'll keep this for sure. Playing out the turn one amulet so that we can play Ratchet Bomb next turn, I guess. Not wanting to slam an endurance so early when it's not affecting their graveyard, probably. And also not making their mana awkward by making them decide whether to tap out for a counterspell or not. Ragavan. Well, now we might need to go ahead and play out that Grazer, huh? Interesting. So we can bounce land Grazer in Forest and still be able to play Ratchet Bomb, which 
seems like the play to me. This way we have a blocker and we get to get our Ratchet Bomb into play and we're still making our mana progress. And we even get to hold up Dismember actually now I think about it. So that's cool. Play the Ratchet Bomb and it's safe to go ahead and take this up to one for sure. We might we might want to delay our decision on whether we're putting it on two or not. Putting it on two plays around the bird and also actually lets us kill a dress down without having to put any mana investment in. We'll wait until they go to combat and then we'll dismember this Ragavan and just hope for the best, I guess. This is why we brought in dismember, by the way, is exactly for the reason of having additional one mana answers to Ragavan in case exactly this happens. Also, they could have Magus for whatever that's worth. We'll pass for our opponent, not committing this Ratchet Bomb. I mean, honestly, two is probably the best number for it. And that way, if they cast a Blood Moon, we can just take it up to three and then pop the Blood Moon. <laughs> just casting iteration, huh? Trying to hit that land drop, I guess. Be able to incept. Hmm. Listening to the best punk rock song of all time, in my opinion, Ocean Avenue by Yellow, Yellow Card. And uh, they didn't hit the land, so I guess we'll just endurance here to try to slow down the uh, Merc Tide. The Tide of Mercs. The Tide of Merc Tides that could be coming our way. Leaving the Ratchet Bomb at one until further notice. Slam the Dryad while the shields are down, and now we have a board presence. I like having a board presence. I don't know about you. Graveyard under control. Ratchet Bomb quietly just sitting here, threatening to deal with whatever our opponent plays. Double basic, just chilling and play against their Blood Moons. They do have Bird Lawyer, so now we'll easily take this up to two. It's all good there. They might even just throw the Shredder under the bus. <laughs> Dramatic Entrance is going to be a spicy one. They were just dead to a Titan here, by the way, if we top decked it. Although they could have Subtlety, I suppose. I'm also like just swinging everything into the bird. So arguably there's no reason to attack with a Dryad, but attacking with a Dryad guarantees we get our three through. There's a possibility they chump with the Ledger Shredder. And if they choose to do that, it's probably better for them. So it's not giving them the option and making sure they're taking three damage, I guess is probably better. I don't know. Although I guess this lets them get a hit in with Ragavan potentially. If they have Blood Moon here, we can just take up Ratchet Bomb and kill the Blood Moon. Although since we have Dramatic Entrance and our fourth land, maybe we just don't... Resolves? Yeah, second Shredder is totally fine. And Ragavan. Mm -hmm. Have you thought this through, opponent? Did you is did you actually think about this play? I, uh, I, d I don't understand. Let's top deck a threat and max punish them. And I will Dramatic Entrance that threat to play around Subtlety so they just lose on the spot as well if we top deck like an Atarka or a Titan or like anything. Uh, yeah, we're not going to let them attack. Let's just kill these Ledger Shredders while we got the chance. Ratchet Bomb coming in clutch. I actually think playing as many as two is reasonable here. Uh, all right, well, we'll play out the Growth Chamber, pick up our Baseju, and then uh, go from there. I guess we could play out the Sanctuary here in case they have a way to kill our Dryad for whatever that's worth. I don't mind that. Let's just go ahead and play the Sanctuary, I think. It's a little worse against Blood Moon, but we have Besaju for Blood Moon anyways. So no Titans here, no nothing, just a dramatic entrance. We could still do the Incept trick. Like even though, I mean, admittedly, if we cast dramatic entrance right now, they're just going to let it resolve because obviously we would have cast a threat there, there if we had it. But in the future, we can always just Incept dramatic entrance to force them to use their mana in a way that they don't want to. Or, you know, they could call the bluff and let the entrance resolve and be like, you don't have a threat. I know better than that. They probably committed the Shredders into the Ratchet Bomb because they have a uh, Blood Moon here. Is it possible we're supposed to just take the hit from Ragavan and let our Dryad die? I don't think it's that crazy. This might just be enabling... I mean, it doesn't really enable Murktide because they could always already cast it, but I'm just going to block. Not get too fancy here. If they want to Unholy Heat our Dryad, that's fine. We have Double Basic against Blood Moon anyways, so they have Magus, that's fine. All right, Threat that we can Dramatic Entrance into play. That's what we'd like to top deck. Oh, they have the Heat too. Now, that's, that's a little more brutal, not going to lie. I mean, they're still dying to this Endurance though. There's the threat. Sadly, we can't play our second land here because our Dryad died. Jeez. But now we get to do the end of turn dramatic entrance untap primeval titan trick. So we still got tricks up our... And especially since our opponent's limited on blue mana, like, that's probably going to be a very strong play. Definitely swinging with this endurance. I am no coward. They did have the mages as well, which is part of the reason for bringing dismembers in this matchup. We'll see if we can steal another game thanks to dramatic entrance. Merc tide. Interesting. We're probably supposed to dramatic our titan into play now, to be honest. Uh... Interesting. Yeah, I guess we're just going to put a Titan into play. Five mana Titan. Little ahead of schedule. Although I guess here, actually, maybe Dragon Lord would have been a better one to be able to Dramatic Entrance into play. But now that we're getting our basics out of the deck, we can just, like, kill our opponent. I guess we could still draw exactly the second Dismember, in which case getting Sun Home could be good here. Hopefully they just don't have a second Merc Titan and they have to trade with our Titan, and then we're still ahead on board. So I'm going to get Double Forest, not get too, uh, too complicated with things. This lets us, I, I don't know, maybe a single Forest and... The Sun Home would have been a better pick. I don't know. If they have second Murktide plus a spell to delve away, that would be kind of bad. Ledger Shredder doesn't really bother me that much. I wonder if they even attack. They can't attack, right? They have to consider. Okay. So I guess Dismember is our best top deck by far. Then we just kill them. Dragon Lord Atarka is actually a fantastic top deck. on Holy Heat. Yikes. Uh, <clears throat> interesting. Yeah, we're not blocking this. Man, losing another game to a Blood Moon effect, huh? That's how it goes. Well, uh, I guess we'll just pass. Yeah, I don't know that we really have anything that wins here anymore. 
We have Atraxas Fall to kill the Murktide Regent for whatever that's worth. I mean, we're obviously blocking Ledger Shredder here, or, or not. I am just going to take the six and just drawing blanks, huh? Well, that is unfortunate. Yes, our opponent wins the game. Very anticlimactic way to lose the last match of the league. But, uh, you know, such is life. If our opponent had Blood Moon, by the way, instead of Mages, we might have been able to get there. But regardless, all right, so... We ended up two and three, and it's time for me to give some final thoughts on the deck. First of all, I know that I I, I did see F. Paulus play a league with Dramatic Entrance and Atraxa, and uh, he was using the straight up one for one exact carbon copy of Mistaken's List, which has a very different set of sideboard cards, and it's playing I think it's one cavern in the sideboard. And I think it's like got a different set of lands, like Fire Spout and stuff. First of all, I think that changes to the sideboard and to the main deck, having the third cavern main, leading on Sanctuary more so than Gruel Turf. And we did see a situation where having naturally drawn Sanctuary, giving us white mana actually was relevant. Uh, so that is something to keep in mind. This also makes it so that Attracts us technically more castable, having more white sources, have, or at least having three versus two, as opposed to just like a bunch of rule turfs. As far as like putting specifically Attraxa into play, this is going to sound weird, but I'm not convinced that it has to be Attraxa that we're putting into play with Dramatic Entrance. But the plan of using Dramatic Entrance at instant speed to cheat out a big creature or to give you a flash slash tricky from Evil Titan that doesn't get subtleteed, I actually think this is fantastic. I don't know if it's better than like a normal amulet list, but I totally get the idea. And I think that we even saw the power of having dramatic entrance at instant speed to force our opponent's plays to be a little more awkward or to give us some additional utility with a instant speed primeval titan that we usually wouldn't. We didn't even get to put attracts into play off of dramatic entrance. And admittedly, the losses from this league aren't really losses that we can particularly learn from. Like, we're losing to goblins mainly because it's a bad matchup. And in almost all the games that we lo we lost, a Blood Moon was involved. Um, you know, that is what it is. It's possible that regardless of how bad it feels to draw extra copies of something like Force of Vigor, that we should be playing Force of Vigor in the sideboard and boarding it in in those matchups. But honestly, that comes with its own host of problems that, you know, it's just the Blood Moon problem is hard to escape. Personally, I've been trying to address it by playing up to six or seven copies of Basic Force in my main deck. And always having little innovative ways to try to deal with Moon, like Attractus Fall or extra Besages or whatever, or Dragon Lord of Tarka to cast through Blood Moon. Uh, I actually think that one way that this deck could potentially be improved, and this is just my personal opinion, is by playing a Tarka and another like castable green threat, like Sylvan Primordial, or maybe even just double a Tarka and the main over the Atraxas, and that lets us mess around with the mana base a little better. We don't have to play the main board Bog. We don't have to play a Redundant, or not a Redundant, an Extraneous Rot Farm. We can lean on Cavernous Holes as a red source to cast our Atarka as well, since, uh, you know, in the matchups where Blood Moon is involved, we'll be able to cast the red easily, and when the matchups don't involve Blood Moon, then Cavern on Dragon does fix for Atarka, since we only need one green to cast it anyways. So I, I think that that would be an interesting approach. I don't see why it would have to be specifically Atraxa, but obviously Atraxa is very powerful. Although the one time we put Atraxa into play, our opponent just conceded the Atraxa and didn't even let us resolve the trigger. But I've seen Atraxa triggers resolve, and it's usually quite impressive, fetching one of various card types, including Amulet. I do think that it is really tough to not be able to play a copy of Expedition Map. I think that Expedition Map would be an extremely good addition to the deck. There, there are times where having no map just like prevents you from being able to get to Titan with a bounce land. And I know that that came up several times in F Policy's League. And I don't remember if that happened to us before, but there are definitely times where I was like, oh, I would think about getting map here, but we don't have a choice. We'll just get Amulet. And that, it, that does feel kind of bad. I'm not going to lie. I think, I think I like the idea of swapping these out for a more castable through Blood Moon threat that still wins the game on its own, like a Tarka. And, you know, being able to fit hopefully more basics, cut Bog from the deck, that sort of thing, be able to fit a map if we can. I could draft up a list or maybe play that list on the channel at some point in time. As far as the sideboard cards, we didn't really get to see Relic all that much. It kind of did what it was supposed to, but it also didn't really feel that impactful. We did see Ratchet Bomb, however, and I am a pretty big fan of Ratchet Bomb. I think that maybe going down to two copies is where I want to be, but as a card to hedge against the Cascade matchups that involve tokens or uh, against uh, creativity, I really like Ratchet Bomb. I think Ratchet Bomb is well positioned against Murktide as well, for whatever that's worth. Uh, so, impressed by this. On the fence about Relic, I think three Relics is a little overboard, so... Definitely, there are some things that can be worked on for this deck, but I do totally get exactly what Dramatic Entrance is trying to do, and I'm a fan of the list. I Again, I can't say that it's necessarily better than regular Amnet, but there's some things it does better and some things it does worse, and that's just where I'll leave it. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments below on this deck, and if you haven't already subscribed by this point, what the heck are you doing? Just hit the button. 
you're already here. And yeah, I don't really have much else to say. Thank you for joining me for this league. And I hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in the next one. This is Red Face Menace, signing off.